The lightweight division in boxing is very arguably the most densely packed when we talk about talent compared to any of the other weight classes over the last 100 years. That is how potent 135 pounds is. There are so many great names that bring a smile to the face that remind you of unbelievable talents and performances. Pernell Whitaker, Barney Ross, Tony Canzaneri, Ike Williams, Joe Brown, some old school guys there. But most guys who know their stuff and historians are gonna pick three guys to be at the very top, the creme de la creme of what might just be the creme de la creme division in boxing. Joe Gans, Benny Leonard, and Roberto Duran. That middle guy, Benny Leonard, was probably in his prime 100 years ago. He was 23 years of age. He's pretty much the greatest Jewish fighter of all time. He inspired directly, probably the second greatest Jewish fighter ever, Barney Ross, who competed not long after him. And he inspired other Jewish people, like writers, like Bud Schulberg, a boxing writer. He wrote about how Leonard probably had to run the neighborhood gauntlet back in the day in Manhattan. And trying to avoid and deal with all those racial slurs may have molded that amazingly fleet-footed, elusive, professor-esque style he had in the ring that gave him the nickname of the Ghetto Wizard. Leonard fought in an era when people fought all the time, when there were loads of boxers. Go and have a look at his box wreck. It's not always the most instructive thing. You can only really see figures and numbers. But the guys he fought in what is arguably the most competitive lightweight era ever, and he was just so dominant, it is unbelievable. He fought the likes of Johnny Dundee, Freddie Welsh, Willie Ritchie, Richie Mitchell, Rocky Kansas, Lou Tendler. Those names might not mean a lot to you, but they were quality guys, and he absolutely dealt with all of them. Not only that, but his mastery in rematches was something to behold. And you can see little bits of it in the film that exists. But when it comes to mastery in rematches, only Joe Lewis probably comes close, possibly in a hundred years of gloved boxing. The Ghetto Wizard, when he was on point, so hard to hit, so elusive, so tricky, and so clever as he once was against Lou Tendler when he was genuinely hurt, but whispered in his ear, bit of boxing legend now managed to spin around and survive a very rough period. Now, going back to that point I just made about the scraps of film that exist, Leonard is very important in the sense that he's a fighter that a lot of modern fans who are maybe skeptical of the older fighters, who accuse some of us other historians of having those rose tinted spectacles on all the time, you will really be able to appreciate his skill set if you just watch some of those old clips. Yeah, it's 1920s, it's black and white, frame rate ain't great, and there's a bit of skipping, no sound, but man, when you watch what Leonard could do in there, you will see a lot of similarities with even the likes of Lomachenko today. He was absolutely superb. All those amazing quality opponents he beat, and he could really punch as well. That's the other... That's one of the big misconceptions with Leonard. A lot of people look at his style, how light he was on his feet. Well, out of his 90 official victories, because a lot of them were paper decisions, because a result wasn't rendered back in those days because of the law, unless you knock them out. So a lot of Leonard's victories are newspaper wins. But of his 90 official victories, 70 of them are by knockout. Not only could he move, bluff his way out of a crisis, had all the shots, sense of anticipation and range unbelievable which comes through on those old grainy black and white films still but he could really dig with either hand as well he was a big sufferer of the wall street crash he lost his money he came back he got battered by another bit of a legend jimmy mclarnon and then he went on to be a referee as well but Leonard, while he's remembered, I feel he is probably a bit underappreciated. If you're just talking about how potent a boxer is at one weight, it's no stretch to say he was probably as good 
as Sugar Ray Robinson at welterweight.